starts and Wall Street strategists are left scratching their heads. Everyone seems to be concerned because everyone wants to know where are the earnings and we're not seeing it right now. However, it is early, but we'll see if this progresses forward over the next few weeks. Welcome everyone to Buy, Hold, Sell. I am your trader, Todd Schoenberger, and my co-host, Tobin Smith, is actually away on business today. He is unable to join us, but he will be joining us later on this week. But I do have a very special guest who is coming to the show. He's, so we're going to co-host this thing together. Henry Weingarten, Managing Director of the Astrologers Fund, is joining me again. And we had Henry on the show back in early February. And boy, did he leave our audience. I would say a big concern is probably an understatement. But Henry, welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell. Thank you. Then now there's reasons for much more concern than then. I'm sure of that. Well, that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Because when you were on the show back in February, one of the things that we were going back and forth and Toby was on the show then, and there seemed to be this big concern because we had a lot of, of things that made us worry. And it wasn't so much about business. It was about a lot of maybe geopolitical um, events that were taking place and also maybe some political um, uh, mm -hmm. thoughts or matters that we had to be um, be worried about. But now here we are, earnings season kicks off. We did, you're, you were right, you did mention the, the law in the market, which we did see um, after soon after your appearance, but now we have the banking issues that we need to worry about. Obviously the geopolitical mess is still there. And then you obviously have the political um, headwinds that, that I think Wall Street is gonna be more concerned about over the next few months. But where do we stand right now, Henry? What are you telling investors these days? Basically what we're saying, this is the strongest time of the year that you should be very concerned about your portfolio. You should be oh raising boy. cash, not panicking, raising cash. If there are stocks you own that you don't want to own into 2024, <laughs> you should reduce or protect. Uh, basically, most companies have declining earnings or negative earnings. Uh, we're going into recession, or if you define a recession as your neighbor losing his job, it's in continuing. Okay. And things are not good. <clears throat> so the question is, uh, for the next crisis, which is we believe is within 30 days, what is the government going to do? They've already met, <laughs> messed up the law a little bit with what they did with the banks, which wasn't quite legal, or at least by the standard definitions of what's legal. And if they do it again, I don't think it can really protect it that much. So most people who have their heads uh, on their shoulders tend to think we'll be retesting the October lows. The only question is whether we're going to break the October lows. We would say okay. it's 95% chance that the markets will be lower at the end of second quarter than they are today at roughly, uh, say, 4140 on the S&Ps. We certainly think they'll be below 4,000, very likely below 3,800. And we can be, go a lot lower than that. And that's a big hot take. So you're saying over the next 30 days, we could be or looking less. at or Next less. Sunday. Now, this is this is has nothing to do with the banking issues, the, the deposit issues that we well, have. Well, no, it doesn't have to do with that. Let's put it this way. If you're a fundamentalist and you believe in things like earnings, that's been sort of uh, la la land for the last couple of years. That's so the true. point is nobody's paid attention to reality. And we believe over the next 30 days or less, in fact, I would say even the next week or two, people will start being concerned about earnings and, and profitability. Now, you do have a whole group of people that <laughs> don't care about them at all, but I think they're going to have less money to play with very soon. Well, you, you mentioned about the banks. I mean, with earnings season and the audience should, should know that. They're doing that, well, of we, course. They, they well, do well. Well, hold on, though. Are they? I mean, it seems that the bar is so low right now. I mean, still, m and Bank reported earnings. They're a regional bank. And it seems to be all eyes are on regionals these days, not the big bulge bracket banks. But on the regional side, m and re reports earnings. And they did say that there was some pressure on the deposit side, yet the stock is doing great. It's actually trading up over 6% today. And because so you, you have to suspect. Well, go ahead. Because you have to realize that the banks have yet to cut back credit, which they will. They okay. haven't done that yet. You got to look three months in ahead of here. What are they going to be doing in the next three months? Are they going to be uh, aggressively promoting <laughs> loans? I don't think so. No, they won't. They're be. going to be looking well, for and, quality. 
And you're right. They are looking for quality because banks have been very vocal to the fact that they are looking to cut loans. I mean, there are some right. regional banks that are talking about cutting loans by 50 percent year over year only because rates are so high and they're looking for the higher quality type of borrower uh -huh. um, you know, with the perfect credit yeah. score that, they, you know, the collateral, et cetera. But do you think, though, because remember, it seems to be and I know that the banking issue was there. But it seemed to be more catastrophic a few weeks ago. Have we passed that stage? Do you think that things may be leveling out or a little bit more stable in the well, banking people, sector? The government came in and said, no matter what you do, we'll protect you and you, you'll, and you won't lose your money, which is good and bad. <laughs> you know, it's right. It was moral hazard. Point yeah. Of, yeah, it, it's horrible. And even now, if you're a banker, why wouldn't you be as aggressive as all hell? <laughs> and the government's going to come in and backstop you. Now, of course, they are this time, at least unlike 2008, they're at least um, hurting the, shock, the shareholders and, and, and the bondholders. But that's not even the issue. I'm not even concerned about that. We're concerned about the US dollar. We're concerned about you know what's going on in Russia and China and the de-dollarization of a lot of the United States. I mean, we benefited in a sort of bad way from a very strong dollar because of being a global currency. It will still be a global currency, but it's not the only global currency coming. And that's gonna hurt. And what we have is stagflation. And that means that times they're gonna be looking at inflation and at other times they're gonna be looking at recession. So we're gonna go back and forth like a rabbit. In fact, this is the year of the rabbit in Chinese astrology. So it's back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes they'll be worried about inflation. Sometimes they'll worry about a recession. And so the traders will have a great year. If, if you're not you know, fixed. But investors yeah. are gonna go nowhere. And I don't think they'll be up 4%. Like Apple today offers 4.15%. Yep. And that probably will be less than you can get on the returns for many shares over the next six months. Well, and, and rightfully so though. I mean, remember it's a savings account. I mean, so right. you, know, you, you have to take added risk if you're looking for a better rate of return. Um, right, which I don't I, think I, you'll get in the stock market. But you won't okay. get it in the stock market. That's our point. Well, well, you are right. I mean, even today we see yields. There's more of a narrative of, of yields rising today. And and so we have bonds that are being depressed a little bit. And so you have to suspect over the next couple of weeks with earnings, like you said, that may continue that pattern. But when you speak of an event and you brought this okay, up- Okay, we'll talk about events side. in one second, but let me just one okay, thing about inflation. Okay. Right, and then I'll answer, I'll answer the, the, the critical thing. If you look at this up, inflation, you think it's only 5%? Now, let's say in Argentina, it's 100% now. That's pretty serious stuff. Uh, and in many places, the world is 50, 70. Don't, you go to the supermarket and you tell me it's 5%. And, and I'll say, I don't know where you're shopping, but I'd like to go there. It, it doesn't happen. So the point right. is we have inflation. The governments, all governments in the world lie to some extent, but we're, we're really stretching it now that nobody believes it. Okay, now what's going to happen? There's a number of things that can go wrong, as there always are a number of things that can go wrong. Starting in the US, our president has some issues coming up very soon. Uh, the things in Ukraine, I think we've lost the war. If you define it as beating Russia, I think we've really? lost things. people are going to come, come to the, yeah, what you're reading in the press, I think is not true. Uh, so you, it's going to become acknowledged. What's going on in China? Is, is very scary in terms of Taiwan. That's scary, um, yeah. And if you take a look, what I would hope would happen, but I don't think it's gonna happen, is that Tether, which is the big, in my opinion, a big fraud um, that's never been properly audited, that would sort of get rid of the Bitcoin nonsense because that's all make-believe gambling stuff. Uh, right. But and, there's, and there are other areas. And look, there, there's always things that are wrong. I, I do think it's geopolitical. I think it's probably in the United States. Um, always Russia. And these events, we have an eclipse coming. Now, not all eclipses are bad. Many eclipses are wonderful. We don't think this one, which is coming this week, is that good. And it can set things in motion. And to the level of it, if we take Indian astrology and their yoga combination, which are very often tops and bottoms. Well, well hold uh, on. Before, before you, before, real quick, I mean to interrupt you. But the please. eclipse, it's coming up on Thursday. Thursday, right. April 20th. What right. is, what, I mean, explain, because this is new to me. So what okay. is it, a solar eclipse? I mean, what kind of, of an eclipse are yeah. we talking well, about? Well, first of all, eclipses don't happen necessarily that day. Sometimes they do. We think it's really plus or minus the 22nd rather than the 20th. It will take place within a few days of either side. 
And, you know, traditionally, it, it just means a dramatic change, a dramatic shift, some big news. Now, not every single time. This particular one we think will be and uh, not of a positive nature. Um, and okay. then, then we go into, and then, of course, we go into the May uh, 3rd to 5th of the Fed. And I don't see how they can do anything that anyone's going to like because they've avoided dealing, taking the punch bowl away. And uh, they think now the banks are going to solve them by tightening up. And to some extent, that's true, but it's a very manipulated market. So there can be an out of the box event, maybe the things I'm talking about, maybe the things I'm not talking about, but there's a very high risk uh, from a cosmic viewpoint. And certainly from a terrestrial viewpoint, and there's very poor earnings futures for the next quarter. I mean, who's really going gangbusters? Even things like Costco and stuff are not doing well. You have things like Delta not doing well. I mean, you have all sorts of companies that are, have a lot of business but aren't making money. Well, you are right about that. And, and back to the April 20th date, that has been, history has shown us worldwide that that has um, some, um, I would say, evil uh, connotations to it. I mean, you know, Hitler's birthday is April 20th. Uh, you know, here right. in the United yeah. States, the Columbine anniversary. April 19th yes. was the Oklahoma City bombing. I mean, right. you know, there's, it just seems like a, those few days seem to always be a, a little bit uneasy anyway, especially they in this country. Be. They can be. Yeah, it, it can be. So, so, but you did mention, I mean, you sent me a note last week and you did say, you said, look, Todd, you know, this eclipse is going to have an impact on stocks. So what kind of an impact, though, are we talking about? Because I, I, I want to get to something very specific. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but it sounds like there's going to be some downward pressure, possibly. Well, that's our belief. Uh, that's our belief. Yes. Okay. That's, that's our definite belief. And based on the history, it's a high pro look, the highest probability is the market's going to be much lower in the next 30 to 60 days. So regardless of whether there's a negative event or not, the markets are going down. You know, where they've already done this short squeeze, up to you know everything from the thirty nine hundred to forty two hundred area, we think will certainly break down below the thirty nine hundred area. Now, whether there's a limit down event, and I can think of a couple that could happen, I'd rather not express it, uh, or not. Uh, the point is, you know, this is one of the times. Just like in December, you look at your portfolio. What do you want to keep till the next year? What do you want to sell? And this is a time to do it. Now, traditionally, your May sell in May and come back in October usually works. Usually. You can usually walk away from the markets for six months, come back and be fine. Again, depending on the stocks you own. Uh, so it's not a bad exercise for people to do, to look at what you have. Are you holding it because you're just hoping the market's going to go up? Or are you doing it because you think it's a really good company that over time in the next three months to six months or a year is going to do very well? And if you don't think that's the case, you should prune it. That, that's okay. clearly the strong message. So whether there's going to be a real shock in the next uh we could tell there's a high probability of it but i mean it may not happen but it's almost almost definite that the markets will be lower very shortly and so depends how you want to deal with that you want to just say okay i'll hold it for the next 18 months and maybe markets will be even again maybe i'll get my four percent okay but i yeah. wouldn't recommend that as as a good policy well, this is why I love having you on the show, Henry, because you are very direct and you do not give me this, oh, markets could go up or could go down or stay sideways. You're you very have, specific you and that's, that's areas important for the audience. Will do well. Energy is still going to do well. I mean, oil belongs around 86. It's right now as we're talking down to 80. Gold is a little expensive, but, you know, we could be 2200, 2500, depending on which of the things are going on. It's 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 a stronger. So commodities in general will be doing well over the next year, but actually they'll do better next year because we're also in a recession. So again, you got to remember, stagflation means we're going to look at inflation sometimes, and then we're going to look at recession sometimes. So think about it like okay. this, depending on the market. So again, tra trading is wonderful. Uh, but again, is the company in a position where it's going to be making lots of money? Also, hiring. You know, everyone thinks there's this shortage of labor, which I don't see at all. Um, you also have the remote work, which means that India and China is going to do very well. There's some companies yeah. looking at now that actually will do very well. So, but on the other hand, from the viewpoint of the workers, uh, yeah, some people got their eight percent raises, uh, but many people right. haven't, and some people are going to start losing their jobs. Uh, you're going to see it more and more. Well, whether that, it's due to that's... AI or whether it's due to inflation. I want to talk about the AI subject as well, and um, and we'll, we'll we'll save that for the next block.
But uh, you did bring up recession. I really wanted to get your thoughts on that. So listen, so Henry Weingarten is going to be sticking with us past the break here. So we're going to shut this break down, this block down, and we'll come back. But at Henry Weingarten, Managing Director of the Astrologist Fund with me on Buy, Hold, Sell. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Hi, everyone. I'm Veronica Dudo, and welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. If you have the Russians that are going into Ukraine, the Americans and the Germans and everyone else in Europe is going to say, hell no. If Russia doing things, you know, logically was their M.O., I'd agree with you. Yeah, Todd, why don't you get him on, on a phone call right now? Hello, you... <laughs> Financial News TV, just the way you like it. Fast paced, unadulterated, in your face, rock and roll style. Join us next time on Buy, Hold, Sell Live. Oh, yeah, I'm going to remember all that. I can't even remember. Oh, God. Yeah, well, that doesn't. I want you to. Uh, oh, my God. Fast pace, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Take one. Fast paced, no holds barred, in your face, rock and roll style. Woohoo! Good sign. Let's kick some ass. Welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell. I have Henry Weingarten from the Astrologers Fund who's joining me today. Uh, my co host, Tobin Smith, is uh, taking the day off for, uh, for business, but he will be back on Buy, Hold, Sell later on this week. So, no reason to worry, audience, and I, I'm give, um, I'll give Toby your best wishes, obviously. So, Henry, so we were just talking um, about, really about, we touched on recession, we touched on AI, we we're talking about earnings, corporate earnings, and right now what we've seen with the earnings period, which just started, we actually have seen a few beats from the bigger banks, but the, but the, the guidance yeah, seems to be sure. really that what's worrisome. And, and one thing that you were just talking about in that first block is the guidance, your own guidance, your forecast in the very short term seems to be, I would say, uh, pessimistic negative. is probably the right way to be very negative. Realistic, but point. negative. Realistic, let me but ask negative. You, let me I ask like that. A difficult, let me give you a difficult advocate's question. Where's the Tell good me. news? Where is the good news? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I'm no, missing something. No, if there is no, some, tell me what right. it is. Where, where is it economically? Where is well, it politically? You know, Right. Well, politically, it's not there. And, and it never really is there politically. But but from the okay. from the economic and finance standpoint, you are right, because I think that's what strategists are saying, that they need to see earnings. They need to see the power of earnings coming through. Usually you look for growth. And right now it right. seems to be a lot of of um, of well, we're not even talking about growth. We're talking about losses and potential job that's losses. Right. And so I have to ask you, because for the audience, so they know. You have a, a real uh, knack for incorporating astrology into your decision making when it comes to with timing, uh, yes. yeah, with, yeah. with timing and, and investing. And, and you've done very well because obviously you've yeah. been doing this for decades. So it has worked for you. But to, well, with astrology, when you are in, looking at that type of, um, of guidance, is that giving yeah. you any type of feel of what maybe this recession, if we are in a recession, is it going to be deep, prolonged? What's that mean for the labor market? Well, we already talked about corporate earnings, but what about for the individuals themselves? What type of pressure are they going to be feeling over a the lot, next few months? Unfortunately, it, listen, if, if I had forecast, which we didn't precisely about the banks and said that the banks were going to go bankrupt, I would have thought the markets would go down. I wouldn't have assumed the government would come in and change the laws. So what we really, at the end of next month, we'll have a better view because we'll see what the trigger was, assuming there is one, which I think there is, whether it's a political trigger in the United States, whether it's a situation in the Ukraine, whether it's et cetera, et cetera, then in which trigger it is, um, and then the government reaction to it. The point is this, we have inflation, so I don't care what kind, the government has to do it. Otherwise, we'll see 10, 15% inflation. Forget this nonsense. You know, look at us. Just take a look at Argentina. <laughs> you know, 100%. Yeah. Turkey, over 70%. And that could happen here. No, not the way it is now. I don't think it's going to happen this week. But if they just hold things back because we're in a global environment, the dollar is not, the petrodollar is being destroyed deliberately by some people. Um, and that means it's worth less. So okay. things are going to cost more. You know, I'm shocked oh, yeah, I, every time I, 
every time I go to the supermarket, I'm in shock. Now, what happens is people then buy less. You have a lot of stealth inflation. So things are happening and, and you go down and stuff, but there's still inflation, regardless of how you want to look at it. People are going to start holding back. Yeah, people are going to travel more, but yes and no. You know, it, it's not rosy picture. So yes, you can be a contrarian and saying everybody's so bearish that we're buying a lot of puts. And that's one of the reasons the market's up, which any technician will tell you, but you can't keep that going forever. Okay. Okay. I understand that. So are there any safe spots? I mean, gold right now. Uh, well, is yes, the really... safe spot, cash. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cash. So obviously, uh, you got to open up a new uh, Apple okay. savings account. <laughs> yeah. Well, to some extent, what you can do is if, if you have something you think is good, but is on hold, you can write calls. Fine. Okay. What's, is, is, is something you can consider too. Uh, but obviously energy, is going to do well. As I said, it's a little undervalued. We're going to a season, even in a recession, you know, we're this massive oil use, you know, they, you know, Russia has basically sold everything now to China and India. It's, it's, it's selling more oil than they did before. The prices right. are a little cheaper. So energy over the next six months will do well. If you don't have any of it, uh, precious metals. Yes, they're defensive, but they're pretty expensive now at 2000. Could we go to 2200? Yeah, I could think of some situations where they jump there in a dime if there's okay. a crisis if there's a crisis but i wouldn't have a lot of it but i have some of it which we do of course um well everything else it depends i'd rather have money look the real question was two years ago when the market was way down did you have money to buy if you did then don't worry about it you can do it again but if you were like in a situation that you were margined out or you didn't have any money to buy then you right you'd be very unhappy and that's what we're really saying. So yeah, there are areas of specific, for example, we have three companies coming in. One is a silver company, one is an oil company, one is a drone company, all of which will do very well by next year. Now that doesn't mean they won't drop 10 or 20% beforehand, but we believe they'll be 20, 30% higher next year. So it depends yeah. on you know, how much risk you're willing to take. Well, I have to agree one. with you. Well, I have to agree yeah. with you on the gold side. I mean, because you, you would think, you know, Traditionally, or you would look at gold as being that safe haven investment during an inflationary period, and it really wasn't. It's just recently that it's really starting to take off, perhaps because of the potential recession, geopolitical risks, et cetera. That makes and sense. Also, this so, last week, it's under some negative astrology, which you had from, and as well as the fact that you hit the 2060 technical point. So for well, another couple well, of days, it's under pressure. Well, elaborate on that, because I now I'm curious. Well, there's two things. First of all, there are three things that move markets, in my opinion. Fundamentals, technicals, and astrology. So if we take a look at gold, it's worth about 1930. Um, and as a crisis, though, it's worth about 2150. So it's trading as a crisis metal above its fundamental value. Now, 2060 was sort of the top of it a couple of years ago. So a lot of people, including ourselves, took a, we took a $10 short there because it's too nervous for me, even though it went way down. Uh, Friday started um, the beginning of that. It hit the resistance at a time where astrologically was weak for about a week. So this week it will be down. And you also see Bitcoin down for the same reason because, because bonds are going up. How can you even have bonds not at 3.8% when we have over 5% inflation? It's insane. You can't do that. So that's going to be... They can't, maybe they'll stop, which is a, a move that would be very stupid, but they certainly are not going down. <laughs> They're not dropping okay. because, because we're not showing enough people being, we're getting false statistics that everybody, you know, there's 10 jobs for every person, which I think is also nonsense. You know, it, it's a question of which numbers you look at. Well, but, what kind of um, jobs though? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, they're not the high quality, high income type of jobs. I mean, there could be very, I mean, you could walk around a mall and there's always, a for sale. I mean, a for sale. I mean, a help a wanted junk. sign. I mean, yeah. there's there's a pizza parlor in New York. I it actually had a big sign out there. I mean, it was, it was something like thirty five thousand a year, and all you're doing is making pizzas. That's not a bad gig if you're a kid. Yeah. You know, you're trying right. to. So, so there are there are th those those types of um. I think at the moment that type at the moment at the, but now at the companies moment. are tightening up. Companies are tightening up, not just tech companies. Uh, so you not only have the AI, but you also have the people who don't want to go to the office. And that's a very convenient way to fire people. Because if you fire somebody, you have all sorts of issues. If someone says, hey, I'm not going to come to the work. Hey, that's a, a lawyer's dream. You can get rid of them. 
Yeah, no doubt about that. So what's your take then on commercial real estate? I mean, is there any type of, of real estate? I mean, you, you, well, we're real estate, but commercial real estate. I mean, in New York, I mean, we're we like right where you are. Investing. We're not there yet. We like distressed investing, but we're not there yet. We were there in the banks, almost, not as much as we could be. That's distressed investing. Yeah, so commercial, yeah, obviously there's distress there. But I think there's going to be a lot more distress well, because we you had, don't have enough had, of the foreclosures yet. Well, we had we had Charles Schwab's Lizanne Saunders on the show a few weeks ago, and yeah. she did say that the one area that isn't getting a lot of attention right now is commercial real estate. Correct. And you would you would suspect that that's going to be the 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 what's going to fall next is that's going to be it the area be. because it, if that's the case, then that will impact banks and obviously landlords, yes, et cetera. Definitely. And, and it hasn't started yet. So, I mean, the point, it hasn't, st- the point is the shit hasn't hit the fan yet. So that's not the event that you're speaking of though. Well, it, that could very it's well not be what I'm thinking of, but that certainly could be, I think that's a likely happening. And look, I know some big commercial landlords, they had tenants who didn't pay them for two years. They couldn't evict them. They're just now evicting them. They're in bad shape. Now, yeah. if you have a lot of money, this is like 2008 and you're going to make a killing. So the really big guys are just salivating. But okay. the smaller mom and pop guys that own a couple of small buildings are really well hurt. So it sounds like from from what you're telling me is that energy and the other commodities are really probably the, the likely place to be over over the next few quarters. But everything else well, is certainly in, in 2024, from. they will okay. do well. They will okay. do well, but there'll be other ones. Of course, the question is valuation. You want to find something that I look, I'm a traditional cosmic value trader, which means I like to have something that's undervalued and also is going to move up. I'm not okay. a momentum player. I mean, momentum is, is another way to play it. It's not wrong. It's just not what I do. And there's very little value. Now, there are companies that have valuations and that will have drivers, but that's not the majority. The majority is still okay. going to go down, and especially even in the tech sector. Whereas once they go down further, I'll be interested. Yeah, but with no doubt that. about that. And tech tech companies have been taking a hit. I mean, communication services even today uh, are not doing well with companies like and Meta I think and Alphabet. I think they have a lot more to drop. At which point, I want to buy them. But not okay. Here. But not to right at this point. Okay. We, it's possible we'll miss the bottom, but I'm, very few people think the bottom's in. Let's put it that way. Do we have a tradable bottom? And the answer is almost definitely no. Okay, I now, like that. Will we have a tradable bottom in six weeks? Maybe, maybe not. But it's more likely than now. And that's what you got to think now. about. Well, I would definitely be thinking about it. I know our audience will as well. So, so that's great. So, Henry Weingarten, anything else that the stars are telling us? Are they going to? T- are the stars telling us that the Baltimore Orioles? are going to finally win the World Series this year. Do you have anything like that you could tell us? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a sports astrologer. I'm afraid I just do finance. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I, I was going to ask you next if Lamar Jackson was going to stay with the Ravens, but we'll say that we'll save that for another time. <laughs> I think you need a different guest for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Probably right about that, so but that's great. Well, listen, Henry Weingarten, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're from the Astrologers Fund. How can the audience find you? Well, there's a couple of things. We have a website, afund.com, but we also have several posts. I have a YouTube channel and you can see our forecasts for the last 10 years, every year. But I, I think the one you want to look at is this year's and the year before, both of which were spot on. And you can look further back if you want, but then I was relevant to today's world. But if you look at them, you'll find the majority of the material there. Plus, we also have a Twitter account at the moment that we're doing because I think this is a very dangerous time. People are so complacent. Uh, and that's a very dangerous situation. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Well, Henry, thank you so much for joining me today. I know Toby is is regretting not being on the show today. That's, I know okay. he really wanted to. He was excited to know you were coming. Well, on, we but can I'm come most, back in two well, months and see if I was right as usual or whether I. Had you were right. La- yeah, you were right the first time we had you on. Yeah, but so this one's more absolutely. serious. This is the serious time. You really have to take a look at your portfolio. Uh, or you got to go away for the next uh, two years or a year. Well, we will definitely have you back and we'll see um, see where we stand. So hopefully, hopefully everything's still like standing. Hopefully you are. I know. So that'll be great. So.
So listen, so on behalf of Henry Weingarten and I am Todd Schoenberger, thank you again for joining us today My on Buy Hold Sell. Please catch us next time. Take care. I want you to smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs>